I hope I give you the shits, you fucking wimp. You want burgers? I don't. Some chicken? You know, I feel like it'd be hard for a werewolf to get fucking laid. Why? Because, you know, you're trying to get some, you're out on a really nice date with somebody. It, it's going so well. You're having good conversations and you're going back to her place or, or your place, you know, whichever, uh, or a mutual place, you know, just, <laughs> be, be safe, everybody. But, but, and then bam, full moon, you just turn into a werewolf. Okay. That's not how the full moon works, honey. There's a whole cycle, like. If you keep track of when the moon's going to be a full moon, then you could schedule your dates around that. But there's no like surprise full moon. Like just. No. Boom. Full moon. Like, no. Oh, surprise full moon tonight, everybody. <laughs> That's no. not a thing. No. What if you like. Well, here's a question. What if you just saw a full moon? Like like a picture of one. Like could could someone hold up their phone and it's a full moon video and it's just. Like, like no. how does that work? No, I think it's the energy from the full moon. Oh, so you're like a mysticism. I don't think thing, it's just know? seeing the full moon. No, I think it's not it's... just seeing the full moon. No, couldn't like have like a like like oh, it does it have to be the moon or is it a moon? Like could someone moon you and then you turn into a werewolf? If it had the right energy, I guess. Or like you're laying in bed and your wife walks across and just the light hits her full moon and just, <laughs> you know. I mean, I do that anyway, but <laughs> but I don't turn into a wolf. I just sound like one. I've had enough of you already, and we haven't even started. <laughs> but yes, we are back to Werewolf Month here on Night of the Horror File, which if you're, this is your first time joining us, uh, welcome to Night of the Horror File. We are a horror movie and genre film podcast that takes a horror movie and genre film and shows it my beautiful wife, Brittany, weekly. We do this weekly. You know, we have not missed a week since we started. Yeah, I know. Isn't that, isn't that great? No. I feel like that's something to be proud of. We have not missed a week. Oh yeah, something to be real proud of. <laughs> I get my gallbladder taken out. I, we got to record. Hey, I recorded with that broken ass tooth. Remember that? Did you get uh, okay, your gut okay, good cut point. open? I didn't have surgery. Yeah, that was really bad of me. I've had two surgeries. Two. Careful. I'll get canceled. Bye. No, I'm not rich enough to get canceled. <laughs> but <laughs> but yes, this month long, we haven't, it's not been a, an official theme, but we have been covering nothing what? but werewolves. Because, what do you mean it's not an official theme? Oh, because I didn't announce it like a month ahead of time and I didn't post pictures and do a bunch of shit that doesn't mean it's not a theme how oh, true true i don't know but anyway <laughs> anyway we've been You're doing... just making shit up now i know i know i do that a lot i yeah. feel like i make up a lot of shit so you know <laughs> get ready for that uh which it's, <laughs> <laughs> what? which i guess i guess um also we're a comedy podcast at the same time for some reason because people find us funny and I, I don't know why and they didn't even have to see my face think i was funny. oh my god Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of your damn mind. But anyway, anyway, we have been talking about the internationally known man beast and no, not your ex. We're talking, <laughs> we're talking werewolves all this month. And uh, it, it, this has been a pretty interesting time. Werewolves, like all top tier mon movie monsters, are pretty unique in each incarnation. As we've found out so far, we've done two episodes uh, all about werewolves, which we did uh, an American werewolf in London and uh, the howling. So go back and listen to those. You know? Yeah, yeah. But we talked about the difference between an American werewolf and the howling. And today we have a classic yet different take on the werewolf. I feel like aside from those two movies, you know, we discussed how like it was. It was like classic brought into modern times. Well, modern times for 1981. But I feel like this is all a modern werewolf in today's feature. It, I mean, it's got the classic monster, but it's still at the same time just more modernized for the 2002. Ooh, 2002. Uh, 2002. Yes, this is a long time ago. Uh, Doc Soldiers that we've watched uh, that we watched this week, which I didn't even announce the movie like I normally do. Wow. 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 Changing Are things you losing on it? here. I'm losing it, man. So much fucking werewolves. But <laughs> 
But I, also, you guys, like, just because we're doing Evan, it's not like I just only watched the werewolf movies we're doing this month. I literally watched every werewolf movie I could get my hand on. And it has been an interesting, interesting time. <laughs> but, you know, Dog Soldiers isn't on the tip of everyone's tongue when they start talking about werewolf movies. But it definitely should be, I think. It was very much on director Neil Marshall's mind in 1995 when he pitched this idea to co-producer Keith Bell while they were working on a film titled The Killing Time. <clears throat> the Killing Time. Yes. Now, now, if Marshall's name sounds familiar to you horror fans, that's because he would take his low budget but tense thriller experience he had on this and perfect it in his huge hit, The Descent. Um, have you heard of The Descent? No. No, the female uh, spelunkers go down and they, they meet their doom to a bunch of cave dwellers. It's It's a very interesting movie and actually very scary. Are you sure about that? Yes. Okay. I love it so much. And Neil Marshall hasn't done a shit ton of movies. Um, I, th I think he's one of those guys who chooses his stuff real carefully. Plus, I mean, for the last years, he's been working on Game of Thrones. So, you know, a little bit, <laughs> oh. a little busy the man was. But anyway, now Marshall began the first draft of today's feature in 1996 with just the idea of soldiers versus werewolves. He wanted to keep it pretty <laughs> simple. Also, he has said that uh, a lot of what he wrote early on was a knee jerk reaction to an American werewolf in Paris, the sequel to an American werewolf in London, which he felt was terrible. And I share the same sympathy. <gasps> What? I'm just kidding. I've never seen it. All. You will run into a few people who will tell you that is a good movie. Is it not? I There's nothing there, man. I keep revisiting, right? Because I'm a big fan of, you know, revisit it. Maybe you'll find something you didn't know was there that you'll like. And I just, nothing's there, man. <laughs> nothing. nothing is there. I did. And it's not just because it's a sequel to America Werewolf in London. It's not just because of that. Because it could very well stand on its own. But it's just... Uh, it's not good. Anyway. Anyway. Now, it took about six years to get funding for this thing. Uh, and with the help of some tax cuts from Luxembourg, uh, the film fund they have, which we've talked about tax cuts in past episodes. So we kind of understand how that works. But for today's feature, our werewolves are avoiding any of the cliches of what it's like to be a werewolf. You don't. I feel like the werewolves aren't really like personified too much in this aside from like who they really are in real life like we're not spending too much time with the werewolves you know what i mean right as, right as we did with the oh, other yeah. you know we we got to know their personalities and stuff we, we're not getting any personalities with these these are purely just they're just monsters monsters and yeah. you know it's fine i think it's fine because because in the in it's very heart this is a siege movie you know, this is uh, Evil Dead with werewolves, if you want to go <laughs> yeah, with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So if it doesn't require that much character development in the werewolves themselves. But, but, which, by the way, the family of werewolves, which it's a family in today's episode. It's just a family of werewolves living out in the woods. Um, I, I think this is the first time we get werewolves that might be cannibals in their human form. And you think we'll, so? Yeah, and we'll talk about that little theory I have uh, by the end of the episode today. But anyway, we have a lot to talk about. Well, not a ton to talk about. I think I think <laughs> I'm curious at what Brittany thinks about this movie because the amount of jokes she's been telling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I can foresee where this uh, episode is going to go. But anyway, let's dive into Dog Soldiers from 2002. So a couple is... You know, going to ravage you in in a werewolf kind of way. I think I think it sounds it sounds more sexy than violent. <laughs> it's the words that came out of my mouth. I don't know. I don't know if I'm down for a couple. And I don't know if I'm down for that. I don't want to be ravaged by a couple. It sounds creepy. A couple of werewolves. A couple of werewolves, sure. Like what are we talking about? Two dude werewolves and you know, Eiffel Tower and me. I don't think werewolves have <laughs> sex, okay? In their werewolf form, I don't I think they're say, sexy. I was going to say, now we saw a werewolf sex scene. <laughs> but I don't think in their form that they are doing it. Maybe. Maybe. That's something that hasn't been explored. I don't think. Do we need to see it? Maybe in Wolf Cop, but you know. 
I'm saving Wolf Cop for a special occasion. Not next week? No, 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 no. Okay, good. <laughs> next week we get super serious. So get prepared to laugh your heart out on this episode because next week we deal with uh, Native Americans and the lore. So, and it's the week of Thanksgiving. So it's going to be very interesting to see how we do that without getting. No, no. Again, we can't get canceled. We're not rich. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, today's movie is very British, as Brittany found out. <laughs> yes. You, you literally were like sitting there watching this. You're like, I can't tell what they're saying. I need the <laughs> subtitles. Yes. I guess I've just watched a lot of British movies. You know what I mean? A I lot guess. of British programming. Because they really do let those accents just come out full force in this one. Are they British or are they Scottish? Well, a few of the actors are Scottish, a few are British and stuff like that. It's a it's a mixed bag of what you got here. Scott McKidd, who plays uh, Cooper in this movie, is full on Scottish. and Because uh, he's Scottish in real life. Yes, he is Scottish in real life. And man, I just, something about that Scottish accent, my friend. <laughs> something about Scott McKidd, or not Scott McKidd. No, no, no. Andy McKidd. Is that his name? Is Andy? Andy? Is it Scott? We're already fucking up people's names. <laughs> but my bad. Oh uh, no, something about he, which is really funny because uh we'll talk about what we know him or what you know him mostly for. Um and he is not good in that show. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a little bit. But but yeah, it's a, it's a mixed bag. But anyway, it was originally supposed to be shot in the Isle of Man, uh which is in the uh, around the UK, British Isles and stuff like that, but beca uh, because that too had tax rebates. It's really important to realize that like tax rebates, if you can if you can afford to fly over to another country and get visas, the tax rebates are, are a kickback on your movie. And you almost as some countries, you won't even lose money making a shitty movie. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's 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 uh, what I like to call in some places what I like to call the ooh ball method <laughs> of filmmaking where you make stinkers on purpose just to get that tax rebate. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, shooting on the Isle of Man fell through. Uh, Manitoba was considered uh, Canada, uh, but well, we ended up in Luxembourg because not only because of the tax rebates, but because it had uh, it gave them a lot more access to facilities and crew. Oh. Uh, I will say when you read about it and stuff like that, I think the one thing that it really had going for was a really, really good fucking crew. First of all, like a lot of people who worked on this, a lot of the extras and the crew members and stuff like that mm -hmm. were ex-military. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so you also had some of that going for you, like the copter drop, which we'll get in a little bit where they come out of the helicopter. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of that's just crew members playing extras. Oh, that's like cool. because they already had, uh, you know, certifications yeah, or certifi whatever. Yeah, they already knew training. how to do that. Yeah. So it wasn't so, uh, you know, hard on the actors who, who didn't exactly know what they were doing. But one thing to note is that this is considered a low budget movie. This was uh, two point three million pounds to be exact, which equals to around three million U.S. dollars. Now, Marshall has said calling it low budget by today's standards is kind of meaningless since you can kind of shoot and edit movies for like zero dollars nowadays. Right. Thinking about that, you know, thinking about like how I could take my phone, shoot a movie and edit it on my computer for like zero to nothing. Thinking about that, what is considered low budget nowadays? Because it, it's weird when you think about it, because like uh, oh, Blumhouse, know. Blumhouse is considered low budget. But they're turning out stuff for like $10 million a pop. $10 million is low budget nowadays, which doesn't make Holy any sense. Shit. I don't think when your your thing says million, it should be considered low budget. I agree. Well, depending on def uh, inflation, I guess. You know, like $1 million, okay, sure, low budget there. Right. $1 million and below, I think. So could this be considered th uh, low budget? It's weird. It's a weird thing to think about. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> I don't know enough about the filmmaking to know. Right, right. Or films. It's okay. It's okay. I don't know about the films. After 20 years of doing this, you'll know. <laughs> I'm... Brittany, Brittany just looked at me and started rethinking her marriage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my marriage. <laughs> oh, I don't rethink this. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm more talking about you. <laughs> I gotta say, out of all the the things we've done, werewolves have been the less trying of of our uh, movie viewing relationship here. I feel like you're having an okay time. Like it's easy. 
Sure. Oh, okay. It's I guess fine. we'll talk about it as it's we get fine. into this. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> you fine? I'm fine. Are you sure? <sighs> yeah, oh, <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's get to it. Anyway, so a couple is camping, and uh, the wife gives her husband a silver letter opener. Later that night, they're about to do the deed, and they end up getting killed by something. Yep. Werewolf. werewolves. Hey, don't you just hate that when you get cock-blocked by a werewolf? I mean, it's never happened to me. I don't <laughs> let things cock-block me like that. So. Not a werewolf. You ask him to join in. But anyway... <laughs> Or just don't go I feel camping. Like, I feel like my uh my my urge to try to make werewolves sexy is not happening. It's is not it just working. not happening? No. Is it happening for any of you out there? Let us know. Uh, but don't talk to him. <laughs> don't talk. To him. <laughs> it's not a fun time. Don't do that. Uh, but first <laughs> First, what you might notice about this movie is even though we watched it on a Blu-ray and on a giant TV, which, by the way, this 4K TV we just got, I'm in love with it. <laughs> My Lord, I've been watching Tarantino movies all weekend. Holy shit. Oh, the feet. It's been, oh, there's so, been so much high def 4K feet coming at me. It's glorious. It's glorious. Anyway. Oh, which, by the way, if you're long term listeners, you should know what I'm <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Oh, but what you might notice is it, it looks way old and aged yeah, and like yeah. scratchy and there's so much fucking like dust and it just looks old, even though 2002. Yeah, that's a while ago. Now I'm starting to feel old again, but <laughs> it was a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. You know, it wasn't like 1972. Like how the quality looks, <laughs> but, but that's because, uh, the, you know, Neil Marshall shot this thing on 16 millimeter and blew it up later for a 32 millimeter release, which we kind of discussed this in the past on some of our episodes about, uh, shooting in 16 millimeter and the different kind of film stocks and stuff like that. Right. I mean, you could do like a whole fucking podcast all about film stocks and shit like that that is a huge nerd thing that i try not to get too into on this but this is that's why it looks like it does you know you had a lot of people around this time using dv which a uh, digital video and stuff and mini dv and stuff like that i believe collateral came out around somewhere around this time you know the early aughts uh 2002 to 2000 10 I, I can't remember when collateral came out but that that's when michael mann used dv and a lot of people were using that which dv made it look like this you know it was oh, like okay. going back to 16 millimeter but that's why this thing looks so crazy or looks like it does it t you know it, it's funny because typically when they put out blu-rays for these type of movies they find the original masters and they do these like beautiful restored versions of the film but uh, what they, they could not for the life of them, track down the original masters to this movie. That's okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Brittany's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did we need it for dog soldiers? Yes. Well, if they could have got a hold of it. I'm, I'm about to drop some really weird hipster shit on you guys because I like the way this looks. Like, I, I literally love just the gross, raw shit that's going on with the way this film grain looks it's it's gorgeous to me <laughs> okay. you don't well, you don't see it very often like and another thing is sometimes you get these movies these older movies uh, um, some of them that have been shot on 32 millimeter or whatever sometimes you get these movies and they've taken it and they've smoothed it out too much and and smooth is not always good you right, know what i mean right like you i don't know it just looks ugly to me in some of these but like this movie I'm I'm kind of glad it's stuck with this. It kind of looks like to me, and I know that's it's weird in my weird eyes, but because I'm not a film person, but it kind of looked like um, like someone shot this with like their digital camera. Yeah, it almost looks like a but found not, footage movie, but not in a bad way. No, 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 not definitely not in a bad way. I think the cinematography on this, for this to be his first movie, Neil Marshall, mm -hmm. like I think this is very good. Yeah, like, this is very good cinematography for what it is. I mean, I'll discuss the action scenes later on because <laughs> I have a bit of a problem with some of it, but I can't fault it too much because this is his first movie. It's kind of what you expect, right? You know? But uh, but there are there's a lot of good shots in this movie to where you're like, wait a second, was this the first movie he worked on? I to, never thought that one yeah, time. 
Really? Watching this movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Was this the first movie? That's true. That's no. true. You wouldn't have thought that. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, before I go way the fuck on about film stocks and stuff like that, let's 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 get back into the movie. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it, then we get this weird cut and it says two hours earlier. And then we are introduced to Cooper. He's doing a training exercise for the military. And his captain wants him to shoot the this dog after he's captured or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Cooper refuses. And he's like, it's not about shooting the dog. It's about the dog doesn't deserve to die. Or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooper doesn't want, he's like, because he's like, so you won't shoot a dog. And he's like, well, no, I just won't shoot that dog for no reason. Right. There's no reason to <laughs> yeah, shoot that yeah. dog. Yeah. That's important later. Yeah, it is. It, it, it <laughs> comes into play, which I, I will say like, they, not a lot of stuff feels unnecessary in this movie except right. it, there is little bits that i feel like they could have done without and apparently from what i read neil marshall could have done without it as well but anyway um now playing cooper uh is kevin mckid which we already got his name wrong like 40 million times but this is kevin mckid uh who plays cooper and uh <laughs> we called him andy and we called scott. him andy scott Stephen, we probably just, just went McKid. through the gamut. It's just, just say McKid, I guess. McKid. But anyway, now originally Jason Statham was in line to play this role. I wasn't even done talking. Oh. I just let you talk for a minute and then I was like, oh I wasn't God. even oh done God. talking. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This just is me interrupting say, you yeah, now. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, the captain kills the dog. Just to prove his point that it's just a fucking dog. That's yeah. all I had left to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, okay. You just always interrupt me. So... Screw you and your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, <laughs> Jason Statham almost came in and replaced him. Ew. Now, <laughs> okay, what's your thing, beef against Jason Statham? I have nothing wrong. There's no, I don't have beef against him. That's just a weird place to put him. You think so? In this role? Yeah. I feel like Jason Statham should have played like, uh, you know, that, that Captain... Yeah. Role, you know, I feel yeah. like he should have been more the uh, the 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 an antagonist. But right. Like, <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, Jason Statham had to turn down, though, due to uh, appearing in Ghosts of Mars for John Carpenter. And depending on who you are, that could have been a good idea or a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ghosts of Mars, but a lot of people hate it. Um, I don't know. I think people just try to take that movie too seriously and it is not. It is not meant to be taken seriously, but Britt knows Kevin McKidd from the television show Grey's Anatomy, in which he does worse acting than what we have here. <laughs> He's a better actor in this werewolf movie. Yes. It, you know, and I, for the life of me, I don't think I've seen anything else with Kevin McKidd in it uh, besides Grey's Anatomy and this, uh, our today's feature. I haven't either. Yeah, but like. uh, So he plays, you know, if, if you've ever seen like. A lick of Grey's Anatomy. Right. He plays Owen. He was a military doctor and he came to work at uh, the hospital. He fell in love with Yang. And and if you're hard up on a sequel for this movie, you could kind of retool <laughs> it to where, you know, he's the same character. <laughs> it's true. He's kind of the same he's character, kind of except same for in guy. Grey's Anatomy, he doesn't have the accent. No. Well, he had to drop it then. It changed his identity because as we see at the end of this movie, he's in the tabloids. <laughs> right. right. Okay. That makes so, sense. Grey's Anatomy is a secret sequel to uh, Dog Soldiers. I like that idea. Interesting, Ooh, huh? Oh. Makes his character a lot more interesting than it fucking is. That's I, true. I don't know what it is about him in that show, but he is terrible in that. <laughs> he's Well, first of all, he's doing an American accent and there's not a lot of people who can pull off an American accent. Like, because uh, he has a, uh, well, we see it in this movie. He has this thick Scottish accent. Right. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird in the show. And also, like, he's not a good standalone character in Grey's Anatomy. No, he requires other people. He requires the women that he is with because he's with Yang. And then he's uh, with uh, whatever his name is, his sister and, yeah, all, and yeah. all of this stuff. Um. And he's just not good by himself. No, no. To he's the not point, good unless there's drama with women. Yeah, to the point, because I had forgotten, you know, because I saw dog soldiers like 
it was like a midnight movie on probably sci-fi at some point. I that's when I the last time I saw Dog Soldiers. I remember kind of liking it, but it was cut the shit on that. And it had been years since I'd saw it last. And so like this is just my second time viewing it for this show. Well, fourth time since I watched it three times. <laughs> but but this was my like second viewing of this. And so like I got it because I watched Grey's Anatomy with you and it, it was to the point where I thought that was just a bad actor. Like I was like, this guy sucks like really bad because he's like I said, he's doing that American accent. It's very hard for people to pull that off without sounding like American Joe, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> right. that's what he sounds like. He has that stern, flat, flattened accent thing, American thing going on. Right. Kind of like uh, Hugh Laurie in House. I'm American now. Hello, everybody. I'm an American doctor. It's like it's just really weird. They all sound like DeForest Kelly for some reason at Star Trek reference for anybody that gives a shit. <laughs> right. We get a very good performance from him here. I think he's the, oh, yeah. one of the well, I don't know. It seems like I like all these soldier characters. They're fine. They're fine. Nobody sticks out more than the other ones to him. There are a few that are very forgettable that you're like, oh, that could have just been soldier number one, number two. But I didn't really even name them. I don't think we're really supposed to like a few of them. I mean, our last surviving members that make it to the house. Yeah, we're supposed to kind of know them. But for the most part, we don't really get too no. much time spent on them or anything like that. We don't need them. No. <laughs> So, so if we don't go into the other characters, that's probably, that's the reason why. They're not right. 100% necessary. And there's not a lot of story to them. No, no. no. I think the ones that you get the most time with and you kind of kind of get connected with is, uh, you know, Wells, uh, Cooper, Spoon, and uh, Ryan, uh, right, right. Captain Ryan and stuff like that. And then Megan, who we meet later on, who I have some issues with Megan, first of all. Okay, but we'll talk about too. that when we get there. Anyway, so four weeks, four weeks later, we are in the highlands of Scotland and Cooper and his squad are on a training and they're all complaining about even being there because mm -hmm. uh, they want to watch the football game. Yeah, there is a lot of talk about the football <laughs> game, which is soccer. Right. Uh, for <laughs> But... <laughs> There's a lot of talk about this this soccer game, man. Then they end up talking about the couple that had gone missing, mm -hmm. and they said that they never found the bodies, just blood and mayhem. Yeah, they miss. They mentioned like the Beast of Bray Road and stuff like this during this because what they're getting at is like this whole area that they're in has had nothing but like campfire stories associated with it, where like people go in and they don't come out and stuff oh, like that. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's what they're essentially yeah, doing. Yeah. It. Um, so later on that night, they're sitting over on the fire telling more stories <laughs> and a cow just fa falls out of fucking nowhere. Dude, OK, you get a lengthy period of them just sitting here sharing stories and stuff, which this is I will say like dog soldiers to me is not that scary. But this part right here. Yeah. Scares the ever loving shit out of you because you get lulled into comfort and stuff by their <laughs> stories. And the captain, which I'll touch on his story here in a minute, but the, the captain tells this story that's just really unnaturally creepy out of nowhere. <laughs> and and then this just fucking just dead cow falls from the sky. <laughs> right, just a fucking dead cow. And I, I'll admit I fucking shat myself during this scene. <laughs> So they say that it looks like uh, this cow was attacked, but they agree not to call it in because it's just a dead cow. Yeah. And they're on this training thing and they're yeah. really not supposed to call. Yeah. Which and we is find really out weird. later why. Yeah, you find out why because you are kind of like, why don't they know what they're doing? What's happening? Why does it seem nobody's like? nobody's told yeah, them. Yeah, no one. They are in the dark just like we are. Now, Neil Marshall wanted these guys to feel like actual soldiers, and I think he gets it. Like, I think he gets there with them. Uh, it comes through in their gallows humor they they display throughout these scenes, like because they are just flippantly joking about death and dying <laughs> through most of this, which <laughs> I don't know. How did you feel about the soldier aspect of this, like soldiers versus werewolves? W what were you, uh, were you feeling about that? Um... Okay, <laughs> at first I was like, what? This is stupid. But I kind of honestly liked it because it showed that 
even if you have all of these fucking weapons and all this shit, you're no, still still not going to fucking win. Right. And and that's kind of what we got this week, because like, you know, the last two episodes we've had people and, and no, you know, we mentioned how they don't stop dead to learn what a werewolf is in the last uh, episodes, but they still don't really uh, they don't have any training. They're just normal people. You know, right, going out. Right. I, one person's a journalist. I guess that gives them something. But you know, so they, you're like, well, of course, you know, the werewolves would be a formidable enemy for them. But but when you think about it, you think about like, oh, you know, some of these monsters. If we just got the fucking military after them, we'd right. just be just fine. You no. know, but that's not the fucking case no. here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I think that they thought that too. Like when when they find out about werewolves, these werewolves and yeah. stuff, they're like. Oh, well, we got this. We got all these fucking guns and all this ammo and shit. No, you ain't got shit, bro. These so these poor guys <laughs> slowly get more and more fucked as we go through this. Yes. And uh, um, which, by the way, one of these guys is named Bruce Campbell. Did you pick up on that? <laughs> Yeah, one of the, one of the soldiers not, no. is named Bruce Campbell, which obviously we all know what that's from, uh, which, by the way, uh, that starts off a huge amount of references. Now, now I'll forgive you on not catching a lot of these <laughs> because you haven't seen a lot. So you were probably ready for that. But and he does it well to where it doesn't feel like it's pandering. But you have references to the movies Zulu, uh, Alien, and even a few Star Trek references mixed into there. There's a lot of st- lines they steal right from Alien and stuff. And a lot of the situations they get into is directly from Alien. Which Okay. Which also, and I'll talk about it in a minute, but like, it feels like, well, actually, I'll talk about it right now. Let's just get it out of the way. <laughs> it also has, to me, like a feeling of like Jaws. You know, and I know you haven't seen that movie yet, but it feels kind of like that. Like, like they're going into something they're not fully comprehending. Like in they, but, but also there's a story that, uh, Sergeant Wells tells, tells them all, which I talked about that, that weird, creepy story he drops out of nowhere yeah. about Eddie Oswald, who, by the way, Eddie Oswald is always mentioned in, uh, in, uh, Neil Marshall's movies. But you never see this character. <laughs> right. But right. anyway, uh, he tells the story about Eddie Oswald and how they went and got tattoos together and he got that devil's face tattoo on his ass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that shit, I don't know why that shit's creepy. Man, that's one of the things that sticks with me from this movie. Just him sitting there telling that story is scary as hell because he talks about how like they they get he steps on like an IUD or something like that and blows his shit up. And the only thing left of his body is that fucking Fucking devil's taste. (laughs) Sounds ridiculous, but it's spooky. Right. (laughs) But I think that's on par with like the story Quint tells uh, uh, the guys aboard uh, the, the, the Orca in Jaws. You know, he tells the story about the USS Indianapolis and how like it got uh, torpedoed and stuff and it went down and they, they were in shark infested waters, which is a really, it's an actual story. Oh shit. Uh, But, but like it just feels, but that story just drops out of nowhere and just sets a mood. Right. About this, because up until this point, before he tells the story, we haven't had much of a mood. It's been kind of light. Kind of playful. I mean, we know we're dealing with werewolves, obviously. <laughs> right. But like. But when we're dropped with these soldiers, it's just very. Uh, it's very military movie. Yeah. They're you know? just yeah. shooting the shit and doing their. Yeah. And we haven't really. We didn't. We're not going to go scene by scene this first part because basically it's just lock and loading and talking about the mission and, and walking through the forest whistling. Right. Which I don't <laughs> think is a good idea. Would, wouldn't you not want to give away your position? I know. I guess. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know what they're there for, so I don't know. Right, right. I mean, we're not going to sit here and point out the the military inaccuracies of our <laughs> werewolf movie. But like, but I do, I do think it, it's at that moment where everything shifts. You know, we really get plunged into a horror movie at this point. So the next day they continue with their training and they come up on a bunch of human innards, <laughs> but no bodies. Yeah. The only survivor was Captain Ryan. And he is badly hurt. He's got like this claw mark through his chest. Yes. Like you could tell something swiped him. The werewolf, duh. Um, (laughs) Well, they're trying to call for help and they can't get through. And the captain is freaking out saying that there was only supposed to be one and that they need to get him out of there before they come back. Well, they end up finding the radio that... The captain's crew had had because yeah. this is two different crews. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because I don't know. 
they don't really explain because like I said, you know, they, they don't know what the fuck they're really doing out there. They just assume it's a war game exercise. Right. And, uh, you know, once they run into these guys who have live ammo and shit like that, it's like, what is happening? Right. Because they I guess they weren't supposed to or something. No, no. Well, they end up finding uh, this other group's radio, but it's fucked up and there's a transmitter inside of it. And the captain says that they need to run for their lives. But he's not telling them why. He's just saying you need to run. I think because I know he's ca- covering up a conspiracy thing here, which right. we learn here towards uh, the middle of the movie. We get more info about that as we go. But I feel like at this point, you could just let it slide you could and be just like, break hey, guys, there's werewolves. Right. right. <laughs> there's fucking werewolves out here. And Cooper's pissed because he realizes that something is weird Something's because he wrong. was in the beginning of the movie with the shooting the dog yeah. thing. Is he was training to be on Ryan's team. Right, right. And so he knows that something's weird. So well, Cooper's because like, Ryan hates him. You right. Know? So we know, like, if the, why were these guys picked for this? And Cooper just right. happens to be on there. So, you know, they're picked for some kind of nefarious reason, which by the way, we learn more. But right. like, yeah. So you, <laughs> so Cooper's like, just fucking tell me, bro. Like, Yeah, just tell me what the fuck. <laughs> and Ryan won't say anything yeah. except for they need to run. <laughs> What the fuck? So Captain Ryan, of course, is played by uh, Liam Cunningham, who I like this actor a lot. And if you guys are a fan of Game of Thrones, which I've already mentioned, uh, you, you'll know who this is. He plays uh, the Onion Knight in that show. Now, it wasn't Marshall's first idea to put the subplot of Ryan and later Macon, who we meet here in a little while. But but he was kind of made to in order to pad out the movie. I'm kind of on his side. On Ryan's D- side? Yeah. Well, no, no. On uh, Neil Marshall's side, I don't really feel like it was very needed. They don't really bring that much to the movie. Like, if you ec- if you cut Ryan's character and uh, Megan's subplot out of this, like, did it really require this? Because it could have just, you could have just had them out doing a war game and then get ambushed by a bunch of werewolves. I like, guess. You didn't yeah. really necessarily need all the weird subplot and stuff we get here, but we, we get it anyway. But I guess if you took it out, well, if you took it out, there wouldn't be much dialogue. That's what I was thinking was there would be no story then. Yeah, It would you're just right. be a werewolf versus soldiers movie, which but is kind of what- But would that be what, better or would that be worse? I don't know. Like better movie or worse movie? I don't know. See, like, I don't know either. Well, then you would have just had an, an episode of Tales from the Crypt, I feel like, at that point. Like, this movie would have been really streamlined. So I think that's why we get a lot of that in there. And I'm not saying I, I don't like it. I just... Yeah. It probably... But I don't know. I feel like it would have been more fun. It may have been more well, fun, because, yeah. Yeah, because we have... With these two characters, we stop dead to discuss things with them. Oh, my God. That's mostly what they serve. The purpose they serve is to stop the fucking movie. And we talk about things for a little while, you know? (laughs) Right. And to give Cooper a more like, I guess, like more of a character arc, sort of. I I don't even think it's that because it's a werewolf. It's not a dog he has to shoot at the end of this. Somebody should have shot that dog in that cabin, first of all. But we'll we'll get... (laughs) What? There's a dog in the cabin. Uh, But why why were we shooting the dog? I don't know. I guess the dog kind of saves him at the end. Anyway. Anyway. (laughs) So the squad ends up hearing another, uh, hearing other people and howling. So they run into the trees, the forest, or whatever. Yeah. And, but by the way, I picked up. I I kind of thought that was. Uh, is that the family transforming? It might be. Because like you hear screaming and then you start hearing hearing howling. Yeah, maybe so. so. I think that maybe them transforming. So one of the guys starts running because he, something's chasing him, a werewolf uh-huh. or whatever, and he ends up. Running into a tree branch. I do, I think I, 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 okay, what would you rather die by, werewolf or tree branch impale? But he didn't know that the tree branch was there. No, true, man. He was just running and he was looking behind him and he just ran right into this thing. And w- would you really impale yourself that much? Like, How fast do you have to go? You know? Right. Well, right. I mean, we saw Tucker and Dale versus Evil and not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> College kids. <laughs> yeah, I think Tucker and Dale versus Evil, or Tucker and Dale probably could have taken care of these werewolves. I think so. Yeah. 
<laughs> just on accident. Man, that's what we need. We need a Tucker and Dale sequel with fucking werewolves and monsters and shit where they have to actually fight them. You That'd know? be cool. Anyway, so he's stuck on this tree branch and he ends up getting killed by the wolf. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he was already part dead, but. Yeah, that was Bruce Campbell that got killed by this. <laughs> So then the sergeant is attacked and his intestines are hanging out. So Cooper comes up to help him and Sar- the sergeant's just telling him to leave. Yeah, yeah. He's like, leave me here. You go save yourself. And Cooper's like, uh, you're not in the place to be telling me what to do. <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah, that's basically what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Sergeant Wells here, who is played by the a very underrated actor, Sean Pertwee, he's been in a ton of stuff like uh, Event Horizon and Equilibrium. But uh, but also he had a short role in another British werewolf movie called Howl. Uh, go watch this. Yeah. Like it's it's <laughs> nobody. <laughs> nobody talks about it very much. Like I haven't heard much mention of this movie, but it's called Howl. And it's like people who are stuck on a train being terrorized by werewolves it's it's actually a very effective movie but anyway uh yes his name his full name is harry g wells which is a nod to hg wells author of the time machine which another reference (laughs) like neil marshall said like he was like i think i went a little overboard with the references (laughs) because because there is so much like nods to other movies and different things you know what we really should talk about is the practical effects in this movie Like for a low budget movie and for something that was this guy's first thing, like working on this thing, it, 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 the practical effects are wonderful, man. For a 2002 movie. Oh yeah. Because I mean, you know, they didn't have a ton of money to spend on these uh, effects or anything, but they do a good job of what they had. Harry Weisenhahn who worked on the FX for this movie along with Bob Keen. Uh, that's who we have. Uh, well, Bob Keen did makeup, but that's who we have here. Now, Weisenhahn did special effects for Devil's Own and Who Am I? And Bob Keen might be more familiar with our listeners as he worked on the makeup department of like Hellraiser, Candyman, and Kroll, and also Event Horizon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I don't remember seeing him in those movies, but okay. I'm just <laughs> I don't playing. think we've even covered any of those movies except for Candyman and Hellraiser. We have covered that. I was like, what are yeah, you talking about? I was just joking. <laughs> wow. Why would we see wow, him? You I'm did so the sorry. makeup. No, you wouldn't. That'd be weird. Right. That'd be weird. <laughs> you just don't listen to anything I say. I think I think that's entering Tom Savini territory when you start popping up in the movies you're working on. Yes. You shoot yourself in your own head. <laughs> yes. uh, but, but no, I think the effects in this movie are very good. Like there's not, it doesn't go too overboard to be like exploitive or anything like that, but I think it's just the right amount. And, and this is where the 16 millimeter graininess comes in where like, I don't know what it is about this movie, but it is visceral and dirty. You know what I mean? Yeah. It looks like, like if uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre literally had gore in it, that's what this would look like. I feel like. Oh yeah. And I think it just. It, it works off of each other. And uh, one of the things which is really cool about this movie is when when you don't have very much of a budget, it seems like you get more creative with what you're doing here. Well, because you have to. Yeah. And and I, I miss that about movies. You don't get that much anymore. So like, so now that you've said, sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Oh, you interrupt. So, interrupt. <laughs> so now that you've said Bruce Campbell and all of this stuff, and I've watched this, mm-hmm. I... Um, I'm getting very much the Evil Dead vibes very, from all of this. Yeah, you can very much see what his influences were. Oh, yeah. Going into the making of this movie. Like, you got Evil Dead in a cabin. You've yeah. got a lot of, like, uh, I don't know, there's, like, demons. Like, the movie Demons. There's a little bit of that going on. The camera shots, when you see it from the werewolf's point of view, mm-hmm. that oh, was very, very much. much Evil Dead. Very much like, so. The, the, the evil, like, looking into the cabin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that you say that, I was like, I know I've seen this before. Yeah, it's very much in in a lot of like people who actually saw this movie. Not a lot of people saw it when it first came out, but a lot of people commented that like it feels like the Evil Dead, like like this is 2002's Evil Dead kind of thing. Going right, right. Because like and no, it, when I say that, it doesn't mean it's the same movie, but <laughs> right. the, the feeling you get. The low budget quality and shit like that. Yeah. And, and it's kind of amazing that sequels did not take off for this movie because there's no sequels to this movie. Well, that's okay because this is not the the great hit movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it it, it kind of it got fucked over when it came to the states. I think here in America, it I mean, over in the UK, it has a huge following. Yeah, and stuff. And over here, it has its cult following, but not as big as a lot of the movies, as you would think. You know what I mean? You would think this type of movie, even if you didn't like it, it would have a much more massive of a following behind it. I just just for the sheer look of it. <laughs> I don't know. I think it came out in the wrong time. 1981, big hit. I agree. You know what? <laughs> you're, you're right. If this came out in the mid 80s or something like that, yeah. around the time werewolves were huge, mm -hmm. then yeah. Oh, yeah. But around 2002, what did you have coming out with the way? Not much werewolves, werewolves going no. on. Probably like Underworld, I think, was going to hit not long after this, around 2004, 2005. And then Van Helsing, which was a shitty thing. And all those movies used. CG. Right, right. Which is another thing, like, because you have, I'll talk about it more in depth here in a little bit, but like, you don't have any CG in this movie, which I think was the right way to go. Because if you watch movies around this time, around 2002, that are CG heavy, it looks like absolute, well, dog shit, <laughs> like for <laughs> lack of a better word, you know? Yeah, yeah. So as the men are trying to run away, they see this werewolf and they shoot at it. Then we get these cool POV shots from the wolf in yeah. black and white. And as they are retreating, they run into a woman named Megan and she has a car. So she takes all of them to her friend's farmhouse to help the sergeant take and all of them take shelter. Yeah. And we we really haven't seen much POV shots from the werewolves yet this month. Like like we get you know, point of view shots, but it's, it's just the camera, you know, there's nothing like, there's no black and white filter or anything added to it. Right. So we're not getting like wolf vision like we do in this movie. Right. And, and that gets taken oh, and it was 1981, but it gets taken to a whole different level in next week's movie, uh, Wolven. But like, um, because you had in that movie, well, I'm sorry. No, you're <laughs> I, I love Wolven. It's one of my absolute favorites. But like in that movie, they have Predator vision for the wolves, which it was made before Predator came out. What's a little different from the werewolves we've seen so far is I feel like these things are more brutal than what we've had. Like so far, you know, on Werewolf Month, <laughs> Night of the Horror File. I feel like these wolves are much more brutal. Oh, yeah. Like I agree. Like, OK, so we well, I asked you last week, you know, who would win in a fight, American Werewolf in London or The Howling? I'm going to ask you again. I think I'm going to ask you on every, every episode. <laughs> who do you think would win out of a fight here? You know, because who won? Who did you say won last time? American Werewolf in London? Yeah. OK, so let's pit an American Werewolf in London against the werewolf or just one werewolf. It doesn't, it's not the whole pack. <laughs> you know? Just take one werewolf from this, from uh, dog soldiers. So dog soldiers are an American werewolf in London. Who do you think went and win? <laughs> dog soldiers. Yeah, you think so? I mean, look at these things. Like, they're fucking huge. They're huge. I think these are the biggest werewolves we've had so far. These things are nine feet tall. That's how big these costumes oh, shit. were. Yeah. So, and they're imposing, man. And we'll talk about their movements, but the way they move is more like, nimble and agile than what we've had so far yeah so definitely so dog soldiers dog soldiers takes it this week yeah those things are fucking huge and scary looking okay but we don't get very many um like face shots well oh okay so i feel like in american Wolf and werewolf and london and the howling mm -hmm. we get detailed face pictures or face shots uh, yeah, as you know, they're transforming and you stuff. You know, you're right. We do we do get a lot of a lot less of that. We get more um, quick shots. Yeah, very quick like shots, that, yeah. and then you almost always see their whole body, which is different because, like yeah. on the, you know the last episodes, we didn't really see their whole bodies. It was all about the head, you know, which the animatronic head and stuff like that. Which they use animatronics on this as well, but like. Uh, I feel like I don't know. It, it was it's very different to to watch this, and you get to see their whole body movement. Yeah, that's something you didn't get in the past episodes, which we're comparing 1981 to 2002. But yeah, so they get to the house, and Cooper decides some of them need to go to find a town. So they go to leave, and the house is surrounded by wolves. So they end up accidentally blowing up the only car that they have. Yes. Um. And while they're trying to come up with a plan, Megan tells them that these are werewolves. Yeah. Uh, no shit. Which, again, 
fucking we're in 2002 man we are not stopping the movie dead to learn what a werewolf is no i mean we do have a few moments where everybody's like are you fucking sure (laughs) sure these are fucking werewolves because i don't i don't know about this but like we're we're not stopping the movie dead, which I appreciate a lot. It, like that's one of the things you'll notice about the movies this week or this month is because like, like I said, on our past episodes, the way I chose these were my favorite werewolf movies. You know what I mean? I chose these as my favorites and all of them kind of share that to where we're not stopping the movie to fucking learn what a werewolf is. We, we get it. It's fucking werewolves. Yeah, we get, we <laughs> get the werewolf. We get the lore. Unless you're adding something new. That we don't need it. Right. You know what I mean? Now, next week, a little warning. It is debatable on whether we're dealing with actual werewolves or not. And uh, we'll talk about that next week. But So then Cooper and Megan go to fix up the sergeant. And sergeant can't take the pain and has Cooper punch him to knock him out. Man. Which is hilarious. Man. The, the stage. Okay. First of all, <laughs> the first one is a stage punch, which... It looks great. Uh, but the second one, because he throws two punches to knock yes. him out, which I love that because he's like, he hits him the first time. He's like, ah, you fucking pussy. <laughs> so he hits him another time to knock him completely out. That actually caught Sean Pertwee on the nose. Like he oh, actually no. collided with his nose, but Sean Pertwee didn't even feel it because he was drunk. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, before you go, oh, did he have a drinking problem on the on the movie? No, actually, he had the wise idea. Because during this scene, we didn't really talk about it, but he has to, he's getting drunk to deal with the pain of them right. because they're fixing him up with no anesthesia, no medicine. I mean, they don't have any of that. Yeah, yeah. So they're fixing him up here, which I assume getting your gut sewn back in is not a pleasant experience. So <laughs> I assume, what? why would it be ever be a pleasant experience? So he he's supposed to be drinking during this scene and Sean Pertwee decided, you know, hey, wouldn't it look better? to uh, actually have a few drinks before, you know, and actually be drunk while we film this. Because I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but like for an actor to act drunk, that is very hard to do. It doesn't sound like it, but to pull it off and make it look realistic, you know, and not have it look like Adam Sandler drunk, (laughs) (laughs) which bringing that up, I think you get what I'm talking about, you know, Uh, so to where it doesn't look like that, like it's much more easier for them to actually be drunk. So, so that's kind of what he did during the scene. Hey, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're working on a werewolf movie, might get a few drinks in, (laughs) (laughs) but that's what he did. And so like during the scene, like a lot of these lines and stuff he's shooting out where he's like i love you i love this man (laughs) that's literally just him ad living because he's plastered (laughs) so cooper is trying to figure out why um captain ryan is there in the woods and ryan says that he can't say anything and cooper's uh, also questioning if ryan is turning into a werewolf he has Ryan tied up and mm-hmm. he he wants answers. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you're going to fucking talk to me. You <laughs> can't gonna... handle the werewolf truth. Um. Well, the wolves come and they, so the soldiers are using all their ammo to fight them off. Yeah. And one of the guys ends up being pulled out of a window and killed. Which this guy, you're supposed to be a trained soldier and you're just leaving your back to a, a window. Just, just open. Right. You just, just nothing. What? You're not paying attention to what the fuck you're doing? Which, uh, back on the brutality of these things, you have got to blow these things apart to kill them. Is something a little different. Or or have, uh, we learn later, you know, you can use silver against them, which is cool. But, like, these things are, like, indestructible, man. That I think that is what kind of makes it more tense. Because this movie, like I said, it's not scary. But once we get into the action scenes, once we get to the cabin... Or the the whatever the, this house in the woods and stuff like that. Once we get there, like that's when like the tension racks up. Like this movie is very edge of your seat kind of shit. Yeah, which is finally. I know because that finally that's, that's why because you guys may be wondering like okay besides Thanksgiving is the week that you're doing Wolf and why the hell did you take a movie that was in 1981 that you've been talking about since the beginning of the series you know you've been talking about the three main movies that kicked off the werewolf hype like. Why didn't you do that as the next one? Well, we needed to take a break, especially before Wolven, which is story heavy. Oh, really? Very story heavy and very like 
it's got a lot of themes to it, which it, it's a very thick soup, what we're going to get next week. But with this one, it's just, there's no themes really here. Right. It's just fun. Like, right. Fun. I find it fun. Oh, I find okay. this movie very fun so far. Are you not having any fun this year? It's fine. Are werewolves your bag? Let me ask you that. I'm thinking like, no. So far. You don't think werewolves are I'm your thing? I'm thinking no. Yeah. I feel like we're watching the same movie over and over again. Oh, man. So I mentioned that I have been watching like all the werewolf movies I can get my hands on. Yeah. What I've picked are very like <laughs> are very unique werewolf movies this month. <laughs> yeah. I will say <laughs> the poor werewolf has had a rough time because it's like the same fucking movie over and over again. Right. And it's and it's either fairy tale or not fairy tale is what the poor werewolf gets. And right. I don't think. I can't a hundred percent say that like, you know, American werewolf in London was amazing. I, I think it's still my most favorite werewolf movie out of all these. Right. But like, man, I don't know, dude. I, <laughs> I, the werewolf movie is so easy to get wrong and, and make boring. I think, I think that's the problem. I think it's so easy for these creatures to be made into something boring as sin. Right. Right. Uh, because again, people don't really want to go with the sexy werewolf. As I've been trying to convert the werewolf into a sex symbol. <laughs> yeah, because you got the vampire. Everybody wants that vampire to be sexy. But like, I don't know. I feel like maybe inject a little sex into this. You know, like, oh, with the howling, you got to admit, at least the werewolves having sex in that movie. That was a little something to grasp onto, you know? Like, oh, getting yeah. a little sexy. And why oh, wouldn't yeah. it be? You know, why wouldn't this thing that's inside of you that's an animal and like you're an animalistic why couldn't it be so much more sexy than what we get usually because yeah i oh, well because werewolf doesn't equal sex and i think people are too stuck on the whole the curse you know it, it, that's and thanks to near marshall we don't deal with that in this movie oh yeah but you know you're always dealing with the depression and the curse and i'm a werewolf and i gotta now i gotta avoid the full moon and you know shit like that there's never like a werewolf who's like and you guys don't even fucking point me in the direction of true blood or anything like that <laughs> I, I don't give a fuck i'm talking about <laughs> also i'm not also talking about horror fucking soap operas i'm talking <laughs> but also okay uh -huh. i'm gonna throw a little wrench in here for you okay sex in a werewolf movie are we crossing kind of uh oh, bestiality no. lines here oh no i didn't even think about it <laughs> oh oh no we fucking there's I, the wrench for you but that's what i said last week you you gotta turn into a werewolf to have sex with a werewolf i feel like or it's just bestiality at that point. Yeah. I think because you, then you're just fucking a dog. And that's that's a whole corner of the internet that isn't this. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> we don't need and that. And I don't want it. <laughs> right. Oh, that's but, I, but I think I think the werewolf could get sexier. I think maybe if we injected a little bit of sexiness into it, maybe put in. No, I don't need that in my werewolf movie. Okay. <laughs> But why is the if vampire got to be so alluring all the time? Like, like the, Because the, the vampires have to lure people in and then kill them or turn them. True. Unless you're the vampire from like 30 days a night or something like that. I don't know. See? That's but a different there kind you of go. movie. But there you go. Because people take the vampire and make him more of an animal and stuff like that and more of this animalistic creature. Why can't we take the werewolf and make him more of a sexualized creature? Beastie. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's too too close to that line. You know, I bet you somebody could could fucking pull it off though. You know, not you, not me. No, no, I'm not. I'd have to have actual money to make a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, get on. what are we doing here? <laughs> Go on with yourself. <laughs> Go on with yourself. But one thing uh, that might strike you as disappointing, speaking about, uh, you know, the normal werewolf movie, and uh, maybe a few of you fans might be a little disappointed at this, maybe not all, but uh, it, the lack of transformation scenes in this movie. We don't get any werewolf transformation scenes. Right. We get hints at it in a cutaway transformations like Ryan later on just kind of dips behind a table and then pops up as a werewolf. <laughs> right. I, I love that scene. It's hilarious <laughs> to me. But, uh, you know, transformation and uh, werewolves go hand in hand. So pretty much every werewolf movie is going to have them, right? I mean, since 1940s with the Wolfman, it, it's been an unbreakable rule. But Doc Soldier sure to 
sort of breaks that. I will tell you why, but I can't tell you why yet. Put a pin in it and I'll tell you later why. All right. (laughs) (laughs) To me, though, you know, it's not 100 percent because no Marshall is trying to stay away from the normal werewolf stereotypes. Uh, One of the biggest reasons really is just they did not have the budget to do that. I mean, you're talking about a movie that came after Rick Baker and Rob Botton. And you know what I mean? They they don't. Well, well, then we're not going to put a pin in it anymore because I'm just going to say it. Oh, Brittany's about to let Because you know how I don't like to like give away even though people have seen this movie, but I'm going to say it. Okay. I was going to wait till the end to say it, but I'm going to say it now. They couldn't do werewolf transformations. Because they spent all their fucking budget on blowing up this goddamn fucking house later on. They get their money yes. out of blowing up this fucking <laughs> house, which looks good. There's a lot of model work in this movie, by the way, uh, which it's glorious. Model work is so much better than like CG, you guys. Like if you're making a movie, just blow up a small model of your buildings. Right. It's not that hard. But <laughs> it's like they spent all their budget on this explosion, which... Which, by the way, that explosion later on, Neil Marshall said that, like, he was just, like, having a good time rolling on this explosion because it was so cool. (laughs) See, that's all he wanted to do. He's like, I'm going to make a werewolf movie, but, you you know, I really just really want to do just blow up a house. Which, by the way, what is (laughs) what does this make this? Is this like the third explosion we've had? Did American Werewolf had an explosion? I don't think American Werewolf. An orgasmic explosion. Oh, they did. They had a sex scene in that movie, which. Where are the sex scenes? Stop. We don't need a sex scene in this movie. Yeah, I need a sex scene. Oh, well. No, no, not in this movie. And let Actually, no, no. We could have had the the Sarge and fucking uh, Cooper go at it. Those two loved each other. (laughs) Brittany's giving me this fucking horror, just stop living look. (laughs) That's a good, that's a good way to describe that. Yep. (laughs) I'm just saying. I like your descriptive words there. You know, make the werewolf sexy. But anyway. um, Stop trying to make the sexy happen. (laughs) It's not going to happen. But, but, you know, it sounds crazy that uh, they didn't have the budget to pull off a transformation at least. Because, you know, they could have maybe thrown something together. But this was 2002. And there's really only two choices you had. Practical or CGI. And dear right. Lord, like I said, CG in 2002 was not fucking there yet when it comes to <laughs> werewolves. And I could argue it's never been there since. Like, I've never seen a good CGI werewolf transformation. It's just, it always looks like dog shit. You hate CGI. I don't hate CGI. I don't hate CGI. I just hate when it's overused. You were so mad that there was a CGI fucking skeleton in Ash versus Evil Dead that... It was a 10 second clip. I'm not saying I'm not saying I was that mad about it. I'm just saying I was mad that they didn't at least go three days. They could have gone with stop motion. You know, that's all I'm saying. Could have had stop motion skeleton for it was on there for 10 seconds. (laughs) 10 fucking seconds. Okay, maybe I have a bias against CGI, but there is some CGI that looks good. It's just for some reason not on a fucking werewolf, you know? Just never looks good. I think it's the hair. You're going to make me turn into a werewolf. Oh and God. it's not going to be a sexy one. <laughs> it's going to be one of those hairless ones like we get nowadays. Yeah. But <laughs> speaking about hairless uh, werewolves, that we do. We get that a lot with uh, CG nowadays. Like when they when they make werewolves, they don't have any hair and it's fucking weird. Like your werewolf looks like a rat at that point. I'm not, not into it. Not it. Put some fucking hair on these werewolves, you guys. But anyway, so uh, Neil Marshall, which, by the way, these things are bipedal, you know, like we talked about with the howling. Uh, and uh, Marshall had dancers portray uh, the wolves uh, because of the movements. That's kind of how they get this. I don't know if you notice in this movie, but there's like a, a real like smooth, like slinkiness to these ones. They're more agile yeah. than what we normally do, especially there is a scene where one of these werewolves is coming through a window. Fucking uh, coming through that window oh, and yeah. like slowly coming in. That shit's scary to me. And uh, so, yeah, like we mentioned, these things are like nine feet tall and the dancers were on stilts. So oh, imagine man. the job they had to pull off, you know? <laughs> Fuck that. And uh, so the heads on these things were full animatronic heads. And I think that's why we kind of get a lot of quick shots of them. 
Oh, okay. Because again, remember the budget. You know, they didn't have uh they didn't have John Landis money <laughs> or Rick Baker money. Well damn. Yeah, so so I think that's probably why we cut away from the heads very much because I bet you the heads didn't really do a lot of work on them. Right. You know what I mean? But I, I still I think these werewolves look gorgeous. And it really does make you question why no one I, you know, why no one really does that anymore? It, it does it really save that much money to do CGI? I don't know. I, I don't. I feel like CG probably costs just as much. Maybe it is a little cheaper, but I don't know. There's never been a full CGI werewolf movie that's stuck around. Like I can't even like think of one to point out to you. Like Underworld, maybe that's one that's kind of lasted a little bit, but I don't even consider it. How much of a the werewolves are blue and almost hairless in that movie. That's really <laughs> fucking weird. But these things look great, and I think uh, the way they look and the way they move and the brutality of them, I think that really does make up for the lack of transformation scenes. Oh, we don't need them. No, I don't. I didn't feel. I wasn't it. missing it. I, me either. I just noticed people were negatively commenting about that on some of the reviews. <sighs> just watch the fucking fucking soldier dog movie okay i just i don't understand <laughs> i understand not liking these movies right but how are you gonna like them and then pick them apart like it doesn't make much sense to me like what's the point i don't know people i don't understand i'm not arguing about a movie i mean i do on the podcast yeah but right. in my everyday life no god this is because fuck that <laughs> right I ain't got time for that. Nobody got time for that. Go make your own movie. Like, that's my thing. <laughs> like, just like me, you know, I'm unsatisfied with the CG. If I was to make a werewolf movie, I would not do CGI. I think I would do all practical effects. I guess I would learn whether or not that was feasible if I actually <laughs> did it. But, you know, I, I don't know. I think I think if Neil Marshall could have pulled it off for two uh, for like three million U.S. dollars back in 2002, you could damn well pull it off nowadays with you don't have to buy film anymore. You don't have to buy big expensive cameras anymore. You don't right. have you don't have to go to a studio to edit your movie anymore. You could do it on your laptop at home. Right. So why are we not pouring more effort <laughs> into the effects work of these movies? You know what I mean? I don't know. Then anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So they're all waiting around uh, till either daylight or for the next attack yeah. because these wolves are coming in. Waves, kind yeah. of. Yeah, and these wolves, uh, unlike the howling and stuff, uh, they, they do work off of a full moon. So we're back on the full moon schedule. Right. Um, which, by the way, I think, because they talk about that football game, and I think in in real life, I think there really was a full moon on the night this is supposed to be taking place. So that's kind of interesting. Because oh. I think it's like September something, like first or something like that, that this takes place. Oh, okay. Not sure. Brittany's like, who paid that much attention? Who, dude? Cares? <laughs> who paid that much attention to dog you? soldiers? <laughs> I did. <laughs> anyway, so we find out that Ryan and Megan know each other and kind of seem to not get along. Then she says that there is a Land Rover in the barn, um, but it needs to be hotwired because she doesn't know where the keys are. Yeah. Um, And then they can try to escape. So they decide that they need to make a distraction and one of the guys is going to go hotwire the car. Yeah. So they make a distraction and um, I guess I missed this and I rewound it a couple times. I didn't understand this. Did two people go out to hotwire this car? So one goes out. And I believe it's Spoon that goes out to cause the distraction to get the wolves to focus on him. And then the other guy makes a beeline for that uh Land Rover in the in the barn. So is it Spoon that ends up getting attacked here? Because the guy that runs to the barn did not. Well, maybe it's Spoon that goes like, see, this is where this is where you, these soldiers are very interchangeable. Yeah, because it's the, confusing. Yeah, me. Well, to us, to us, it's like that, because like to me, right. like the only ones that you really have much of a fucking personality are uh, Cooper, you know, Ryan and Sarge. Right. So like Spoons kind of gets more of a personality towards the end. Like, I don't think he has too much. I mean, it's possible to follow this movie and not, and then be uh, different characters. I'm right. sure it's just for us. It did not feel that way. No, like I've never felt that way. Well, anyway, so someone ends up getting attacked by a werewolf. 
the guy with the Land Rover, he hot wires uh-huh. it and pulls it up to the house. And, but there's a wolf in there and it kills him. And, and I believe the guy who, uh, who drives the car, right? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Kirkley uh, is the name of the character here. And this is Chris Robinson who plays him, which by the way, so he didn't know how to drive. He had no idea how to drive. And he held this information back away from Neil Marshall until the night before they were going to shoot this scene. What the fuck? So he comes up and he tells Neil Marshall he can't drive. And Neil Marshall gets mad. And so he's like, well, you're going to pull it off anyway. <laughs> Has him try to do it. And as soon as the scene starts, he fucking drives off the road. <laughs> Oh my god! So they had a stuntman finish the scene, but it's just wow. Why would you not? I'm just saying, you know, sometimes it's up to the actor to come to the director and say, "Hey, I can't do something." Right? I Especially don't... drive a car. Yeah. Well, because you got to think, you know, this is low budget. They're not going to be able to hire a stuntman right off the fucking bat, you know? Right. But they could have had it to one of the other characters. Yeah, there's other crew members. I mean, you had other crew members jumping out of the helicopter. Right. <laughs> but, okay, so, like, really, you get to see Neil Marshall's skill as, at making a thriller. You know, I don't, like, I know he's predominantly does horror, but I don't feel like he's 100% a horror director. You know what I mean? And I think the best horror movies come from people like that. As I've said before, I think Eli Roth is, he's very well known, but I feel like he's very underrated. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of people I hate agree. on his, <laughs> Brittany just has a big old girl boner for him. <laughs> I have a boner boner for him. <laughs> <laughs> he liked one of our tweets when I said we had the hots for him. He noticed <gasps> us. He noticed that. us. <laughs> but, <laughs> you didn't tell me that. He probably has like some intern doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but like uh, I feel like with Eli Roth's movies, he gets a lot of hate, but I feel like his movies are so good. I'd, I'm seeing something nobody else is seeing, I guess. But like <laughs> but Eli Roth does not consider himself a horror director. You know what I mean? Right. And I feel like when when these directors don't see themselves at that, they just see themselves as movie directors. We get some of the best works from them. And I think uh, Neil Marshall took what he had here and went on and did The Descent, which is another horror movie. But at the same time, it, The Descent is like <laughs> – The Descent does not let you go. Like these moments in this movie where you feel that tension – Mm-hmm. And like where they're running to get the Land Rover, you're like, when the fuck, who's going to get eaten now and shit like that. That's the entire movie of The Descent. Oh, wow. Plus throw in the uh, the fact that you're claustrophobic because it's shot inside these little cave systems. Oh. <laughs> Very good movie. We got to cover on here sometime. But but no, like, well, well, another director that was like that was Wes Craven. You know, we've talked about Wes Craven not considering himself a horror master, even though he was. He, right. he, he saw himself as just a director. And I think you get some of the greatest works from that when someone doesn't have an ego to be like, I am a horror master. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Anyway, so Cooper gets pissed because um, the car's fucked. His friends are fucked. <laughs> they're running out of ammo and he wants answers from Ryan. Uh, Ryan finally tells them that th- that special weapons division sent them there to get a live werewolf and bring it back for testing. He then says that Cooper squad was there as bait for those werewolves. Which, by the way, do we really want how, how you hear about this a lot in movies <laughs> where we're like, oh, a werewolf exists. Well, let's get him to fight on our side. It's like, do you, would it really be worth it to get a fucking werewolf to try to make an army out of? I don't think that's what they were trying to do. I think they were just doing testing. I guess. But it's the military. So, you know, they were trying to weaponize this oh, fucking yeah. werewolf. Oh, like, yeah. why the, and this would really happen, you guys. Like, I feel like if werewolves exist. We as oh, America, yeah. we'd be fucking trying to get these goddamn werewolves to fight. Why on do our you side. think people? Or trying to get Bigfoot. Yeah, you'll okay. get fucking weaponized Bigfoot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but it, but I just feel like like that's the dumbest decision like ever. Like it's let's not, not smart. Let's not do this. I don't think we need to have a werewolf <laughs> army. No. First uh, of all, first of all, it doesn't sound feasible. They're gonna turn on. You're gonna have to take a werewolf out of the forest where its natural <laughs> spot is. And what are you gonna do? Dump it in Iraq? Just this fucking werewolf coated in fur, just having heat strokes. <laughs> oh my god! Well, that was a bad decision. Just fucking dead werewolves all over the <laughs> the, 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 the Iraqi desert. 
Oh my goodness. So Cooper gets even more pissed and he starts to fight Ryan until he turned into a wolf. They shoot him until he just runs away. Yeah. He's like, fuck this, I'm out. So they all decide that this pack of wolves is probably taking cover in the barn. Well, kind of Megan says that. Yeah, which... Meh. This bitch. Meh. This bitch. So they decide that they're going to go burn it down. Mm-hmm. They do all that. And when they get done, bitch ass motherfucking Megan says, mm, there was no wolves in there. And uh, I'm a wolf, too. Yeah. What? Yeah. And that's what I said. I have some issues with Megan. Right. First of all, because this whole movie centers around her because if you notice she's the one directing them to do things yeah and that fucks them up like she fucks them up the entire time but at the same time like okay which i'll let you finish this scene first okay. before i get into it so before she fully can transform one of the guys shoots her in the head yeah cooper caps her in the fucking he's like dome, yeah fuck which this, I'm like, I'm yes, <laughs> yes cooper doesn't even have a hesitation he's no. like oh you fucking bitch <laughs> right. <laughs> but a lot of people i think and me too when i first saw this movie they a little confused at what megan's deal is what is her fucking end game to this right like, because if she was in cahoots with the fucking werewolves the entire time why didn't she just why didn't they just let the wolves in to eat them all? Which, right. uh, which I guess maybe she was trying to like let them waste their ammo or something like that. I don't know, but I I don't know because either. she keeps checking on the ammo situation too. Yeah, through this movie, but um, you know, I I feel like he, I feel like Megan isn't a member of the werewolf family, uh, or not originally. I think she you know said I mean? something about being an outcast or something. The way she describes it. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's the outlier of the werewolves or something like that. Like, maybe they turned her, I don't know, because she was nice to them or something like that. Or they trust her. I I don't know. It it just seems very weird, her, like, long game she plays with these people. Her existence is weird. Like, why wouldn't she just be like, I don't know how to fucking help your sergeant friend. I'm not going to. Like, what's, I don't know. I don't don't know. know. But, um. (laughs) <laughs> but there was a scene earlier in the movie where she cuts herself on glass. I don't, did you notice that? It's like a weird kind of scene where she yeah. has that cut on glass. She looks at her hand and stuff. That was there for a reason. Like that was supposed to be a sequel, like pickup. Like that's supposed to, because I guess he, Neil Marshall had planned a sequel to do with werewolf DNA or some shit like that. So oh, that okay. was supposed to kind of work into there somewhere. <laughs> but at the same time, you see that and it kind of confuses you because you're like, did she get cut and turn into a werewolf? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because you're like, can glass? What? Wait a second. Right. Was there like werewolf blood <sighs> on this glass or something? Oh, yeah, it's a little confusing a little bit of this. Here's the thing. Did she assume that maybe they were there to administer a cure? I don't know. Because that would mean she's ashamed to be a werewolf. And and I'm like, well, if she was ashamed to be a werewolf, would, wouldn't she not direct them to fuck up? their exits and stuff like that i have no idea anyway Anyway. we may be looking too much into him (laughs) as a character my bad i said what i needed to say about that fucking bitch anyway (laughs) i'm just glad i just love it because usually during this moment because you you kind of feel like cooper and her having a thing yeah you know but as soon as he finds out he's just like nope Nope. fuck you (laughs) which like that's a that's a thing and I think that really, like, I don't know. Does Cooper get an arc with that whole dog thing in the beginning? I guess so, probably. I guess. I don't know. He learned his lesson? I guess. Well, no, he didn't learn his lesson because he said, you know, without a reason, I'm not going to kill that dog. He, he had a reason to kill her because she, she was going to transform. Yeah, she fucked up her his whole night. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't know. Megan, <laughs> terrible. <coughs> again, again, you could have dropped Megan. We yeah. could just not had her. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. We didn't need this whole little thing right here. See, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, it just seems you like you can definitely tell. And I guess that's my only issue with this movie. You can definitely tell Megan and Ryan a little bit are kind of tacked on. Right. You know, just just the slightest touch. Not that not that it fucking ruins the movie for me or anything. That's no. not what I'm saying. But you can definitely kind of tell. So it's too late, though, because Megan has let the other werewolves into the house. Well, Wells and Cooper are trying to hide, but when they do, their friend Spoon starts turning into a werewolf. So Wells b- makes Cooper get into the cellar 
and he blows up the house with him and the werewolves inside. Yeah, which Spoon, before he gets fucking attacked, like he's just like pelting this wolf with all this fucking shit. Yes, he's trying. He's trying. He gives up. But and I, poor Spoon, like in the beginning of the movie, yeah, kind of in the beginning, when they find um, R- Ryan, yeah, when they find Ryan, I was mm-hmm. like, when is this? Spoon's trying to tell them, like, hey, it's a, it's about to get dark. It's about to get dark. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's just yelling at him, shut up, Spoon. Yeah. Like, they're like, stop, not right now. Yeah. And he's I, like, uh, it's about to get dark. <laughs> I like this character, Spoon. I think, like, out of the, out of most of the soldiers, like I said, you know, a lot of these soldiers are very interchangeable. They're not really character characters. Right. But Spoon does get a little bit of something. Like, he was actually going to be portrayed by Simon Pegg at one point. Like, oh, Simon Pegg. You know, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Simon Pegg. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Edgar Wright, though, convinced uh, him to save his first horror role for Shaun of the Dead. So that's why he didn't do that here. Oh, okay. Kind of worked out for him, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But uh, now, originally, we did get to see Spoon get killed by these werewolves on screen. But as you notice, like, you know, he gets attacked by the wolf and stuff, and the wolf holds him against the wall. And, all. you know, you just you get that last line he tells that wolf where he's like, I hope I give you the shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Neil Marshall felt like if we saw him get ripped in half right after that, it would kind of undercut that little you know, oh yeah, that little line, which I do. I love that line. Yes. So then the sun is coming up, mm-hmm. and Cooper and Werewolf Ryan run into each other. Oh, and they fight, and Cooper ends up stabbing Ryan in the chest uh-huh. with the silver letter opener from the beginning of yeah, the movie, yeah, yeah. and uh, shoots him in the head, and we get this classic. Ash versus Evil Dead scene here. Yes. This is what I'm going to call it, even though Ash didn't come out till later. But, well, this show. I don't know if they do this in the Evil Dead. Anyway, he, when he shoots him, we get blood coming down the screen. Yeah, yeah. We get the blood shot at the screen and yes. stuff at us. Which it is, it is, it is a very nice moment where he shoots this fucking werewolf yes. in the goddamn face. Um, okay, if you notice, and I mentioned earlier, I think this is the first... I, I don't know. I haven't like I, I, I don't really see this much in other werewolf movies because mostly, like I said, werewolf movies are fixated on uh, the werewolves being uh, cursed. You know, right. what I mean? except for the howling. The howling didn't really focus on that too much. But I think this might be the first instance where we have cannibals like not not just cannibal. You know, the werewolves are eating people, obviously, but like. I think the people, when they're not in werewolf form, they're cannibals. Because if you notice, Cooper finds himself in this cellar surrounded by dead bodies that have been, like, butchered up. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, these dead bodies are actually leftover props from Event Horizon. So if you look real close, you can, you might be able to see a few. No. I, nobody watches we're movies not like that. We're not, we're not going to put two and two together like that, okay? Nobody watches movies like I do. But <laughs> but that that's because the effects department worked on uh, Event Horizon before. But now these bodies, though, like I said, they look butcher, which kind of connects to a scene earlier in the movie when they all first get to the cabin and eat that stew. Ew. Where they're like, yeah, the stew's here. And they, they eat that fucking stew. And someone comments on how it tastes like pork. <gasps> Ew. Pretty sure they done ate some human stew. <laughs> like, so that would say that this family, when they're not in werewolf form, are eating human stew. I mean, if you crave it in wolf form, why wouldn't you crave it in? Yeah, human it makes form? a good point. Like, because y- Edward Cullen doesn't eat anything. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> fucking twilight again i don't think we'll ever be able to do a fucking werewolf month or a fucking vampire month without that goddamn movie coming up and i'm sick of it i'm sick of it we're having a marathon tonight baby texas is trying to burn all these books they need to burn the twilight movies that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> someone burn has a bootleg twilight copy movies. somewhere poor robert padson trying to do any role possible to get that fucking thing out of his mouth <laughs> he fucking did i ever tell you about the interview one time i saw with him Where that lady's like, how do you think you connect to Edward Cullen? I don't. He's nothing like me. (laughs) I was like, dang. (laughs) He hates this role. (laughs) He's like, I've done other fucking movies. Now move the fuck on. Which, by by the way, I think most of you who complain about uh, fucking 
Robert Pattinson being Batman and shit like that have not seen his other movies. That dude is a good actor. Those Twilight movies fucking. It's not his fault. It put the stank on him. And I feel bad for the man because he's a damn good actor. <laughs> Go see the Rover where he stars alongside with Guy Pierce. That is a damn good fucking movie, man. Like post-apocalyptic Australian fucking movie. It's fucking crazy. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Goddamn I just Twilight. had to mention it. <laughs> There's so much you could add to those movies to make them so much better. And I okay. realize they're young adult novels. And so you couldn't put that much sex and violence in the movies themselves because you're trying to gear it towards young adults. But <laughs> you could have put something in there. Anyway. Something. Anyway. Anyway. So now that everything is safe, Cooper leaves the mo- and the movie is over. <laughs> but, Bye, movie. Yeah. It's just it, he just walks out and the movie's over. He walks out in the sunshine, which again is another shot from the Evil Dead where he walks out of the fucking cabin. Yes. Like I said, you can definitely see his influences here. Yes. But they have pictures of these werewolves. Uh, so the pictures play on the title screen. And then we see a newspaper article. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like an epilogue where it shows the newspaper article where it says, like, he's in the tabloids. The tabloids, yeah. that's what it is, yeah. Which we get the final score of the game, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Spoon didn't get to learn it. Oh. <laughs> but He just wanted to drink beer and lay in bed with man, a hot lady and you, watch the football game. I'm telling game. you, that, that, that's got to be the saddest part. <laughs> Dude <laughs> didn't get to learn the score. Oh, now, Dog Soldiers got a theatrical release in 2002 in the UK, but here in the States, much to Neil Marshall's disappointment, it only got a sci-fi channel release uh, when it first came out, which this is before sci-fi. Well, OK, for you young people, <laughs> it's called sci-fi now. It's just S-Y-F-Y. Uh-huh. But back when I was younger, it was sci- the sci-fi channel. <laughs> right. That's what we called it. So it's the same thing. But Marshall blames this on producers not having much faith in the movie. Uh, But it did get a small little run at the Egyptian theater in L.A. And Marshall has said, you know, the people who saw it there really fucking enjoyed it. I I think if I would have seen it in the theater, I would have really, really fucking had a good time. I feel like on a big screen, this would have been a lot of fun. My issue, and I said about this, about the action scenes, I'd kind of mention it. I feel like the action scenes are a little muddy. In some parts, yeah, just just a little bit. They're hard to see. It's very hard to see. And maybe that's because of the low budget, which I can't fault the movie for that very much because of how low budget this movie is, right. even though we're talking millions. <laughs> still low budget, you know, <laughs> still very low budget at the time. Uh, that, that aside, it, it did. Uh, Dog Soldiers got mostly positive reviews for those who did see it, and it helped Neil Marshall go on to direct arguably his biggest hit, The Descent. Here in the States, it's definitely gotten a cult following. Um, Talks of a sequel were happening around 2004 and had been going on for years up until like, God, five years ago. They were still talking about a sequel. Uh, Producer David E. Allen back in 2004 stated that – it would be called a uh, dog soldiers, fresh meat, you know, Ooh. and come out, but that fell through. There was a web series, if I'm not mistaken, inspired by little red riding hood called dog soldiers legacy. I have not seen it and I don't even know if it came out, but I have read that was a thing. And I saw ads for it back in the day. Cause here's the very confusing part. Dog soldiers, fresh meat. I, I saw ads for it. Oh. Like, like not trailers or anything. I'm just talking about like, uh, you know, like mo- almost like movie posters, little teasers, yeah, of it saying it was coming in 2014. You know, back then, and it is in you know 2014 and shit just came and went, and there's no mention of a sequel. And uh, Neil Marshall has stated, you know, talks of a sequel probably amount to nothing now because, oh. and I think it's mostly because just interest has kind of faded away. You know, right? And it's been a long time. It really has since 2002. I think honestly. I don't know. I think you'd probably end up getting a remake before you'd get a sequel yeah. at this point. But as far as werewolf movies go, this one ranks as one of my favorites because it's fun. That's that's purely why. <laughs> like, you know, the I talked at length about the special effects being a great part of this movie, but they're not as that special compared to any other werewolf movie, really, except for the werewolves themselves. I think these are really gorgeous werewolves for 2002. 
But in the end, this is just a fun movie to me. I don't find it very scary or it anywhere near scary levels as our previous movies. I mean, even American Werewolf in London, I feel like is a little scarier than this. Yeah. There is tension. Like there is a lot of tension in this movie. It's yeah. very good. Um, uh, you know, it makes up for the, the lack of scary scenes and stuff to me uh, with the action. And just a really good performance from our cast. I don't think anyone's phoning any performances here. Um, right. Everybody's doing their best and it, it it makes for a good movie. Even the 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 other soldiers who feel kind of interchangeable or felt that way to us. I keep saying that because I don't want you guys to be because I'm sure someone out there is like, oh, no, they were all unique characters. I'm sure they were to you, but it, it, that's not what we gathered no. when we watched <laughs> it. You know, they felt very kind of just there <laughs> they right. you know cooper's a character sarge is a character ryan's a character and megan's a character spoon is kind of a character <laughs> kinda, he's a half character <laughs> kind of half character and that's what we got from this but um dog soldiers to me is it's simple i think that's what what i like about it. it's a simple story there's not much there there's those tacked on subplots are a little much for me but like in the end it's just fun I mean, that's all I really cared about. I wasn't bored during this movie. And like I said, that's one of the biggest things a movie can do uh, negatively is be boring. Oh, yeah. You know? And I, I've never been bored. It still holds up. I can watch it. It's a movie I can throw on in the background while I'm doing shit. Doesn't require a lot of attention. <laughs> you know, it's it's a whole lot of fun. Um, but OK, so. And I know I com I complained about the uh, action scenes and stuff like that, and and my thing about that is, that's not really so much of a complaint, unless your budget is huge. Like once you like Christopher Nolan, I'm um, looking at you, man. In those Batman movies he did, the action scenes are barely comprehensible. Like I can't see what's going on. Oh yeah. And you're talking about movies that had multi-million dollar fucking budgets <laughs> right. and I can't see what Batman's punching at any given moment. <laughs> so that's when that becomes more of a critique. But when it's a low budget like this, I don't fault it for that kind of shit because you don't have the budget. You're just starting out. You're making your first movie. It's all good, man. The other shit makes up for it. But, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Enough about me blowing this fucking movie. What did you think about Dog Soldiers from 2002? So. Okay. I figured out my issue with this movie. Not, okay. Not that it's a bad movie. I okay. did think that a lot of it was kind of boring. Um, It's a fucking bro movie. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It is very much a bro movie. Like, you don't have a lot. M Megan barely passes the fucking Bechdel test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There no there it doesn't this movie she does not even, pass the Bechdel test. No, you're right. She doesn't even There's need to no, be there. Like right. she only works as a foil for uh, yeah, you're right. She only works as a foil for the soldiers. Well, the reason why it doesn't pass the Bechdel test is because I think there has to be more than Oh, wait. No, I was thinking wrong. No, the fe I okay. I think we, there has to be more than one female. We might both be wrong. We might both be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure the female has to have a character arc that doesn't rely on a male to get her there and this does doesn't not. Mag yeah that's what i meant yeah, yeah. that's well, what i was thinking something about the females only yeah. no men or something like that and we might well, like i said we might both be wrong but <laughs> anyway but anyway it's a pro movie and i don't me personally i don't care for soldier movies it feels like rambo with werewolves right i don't like soldier movies because it's like a bro thing like okay i can hang with the dudes whatever but to me war and guns and all that i don't care for that okay i understand i'm just not a gun girl like because i will i will say you not to sound like a stereotypical guy but this movie does kind of play into my whole like little kid little boy you know uh, loves of like playing commando and then throwing a werewolf into the mix. You know, it, it kind of plays into that. So I kind of get where you're like going. Like I had no I issues with this movie. Mm -hmm. It, but it, it didn't appeal to me. I definitely am not choosing something with soldiers in the name. I get you. And then I you got you. dog soldiers. So you, then I'm like, there's dogs, but then you find out that it's werewolves. Yeah, no, I'm good. 
I, I, you know, I could see why you wouldn't like this movie over that. That is, <laughs> yeah. uh, that is perfectly. There's nothing wrong with yeah, the movie. The that movie is, is just a perfectly fine. good fucking explanation. Because <laughs> yes. here's the thing that we never do on this is we're like, I don't understand why you don't like this movie. You know, as, as someone who loves like, fucking, there's not a lot of movies I hate. Well, we found out Twilight, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I never like to, uh, to do what a lot of people do is like, you know, most movie fans like me would be asking you right now, why, why couldn't you like this movie? Why couldn't you like it? It's like, cause I don't like movies like this. Right. That's a perfectly good a answer. Right. You know, like, like with a, I've always said, you know, I don't find, I find it weird when people are like, this is the best movie of the year, you know, when something fucking comes out. And it's always something like a Marvel movie or like a Batman movie or something like that. And I'm like, that kind of requires you to like Batman. Right. Like you could go in. It could be the it could legitimately be the best movie ever made. But if it's a story about like Batman and you hate Batman, you're going to hate that movie. Right. There's no clearing it up for you. So, right. so when you go into something like this, that's all about soldiers and werewolves. <laughs> If you're not particularly good on like a war movie or you're not particularly keen on soldiers or anything like that or pew pew guns and shit like that, you're going to hate this movie no matter what. Right. I mean, you can. And it's not that I hate the movie. No, no. I, I maybe I'm using the wrong choice of words, but. But I'm not going to throw this on and watch it. Right, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, I watched I totally it for the you. podcast and that's it. I totally get you, which I guess I guess I can kind of like. <laughs> kind of like cave on my whole hate of Twilight a little bit because no you know what I just no. don't understand why people <laughs> like those movies there's nothing to them they're not movies the thing is it was the with Twilight I'm mm -hmm. gonna defend it just a little bit is the books were different Twilight movie was the best we were gonna get from the books but the books were way better I think because I've never read the books and I'm not gonna sit down and read the books I'm no. sorry. I'm just not going to dedicate that much time to those. I got, I'm too into Dune right now to do anything. <laughs> uh, but like, I kind of understand that, especially because you got movies that are trying to appeal to mass crowds. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they cut out a lot of like the violence and stuff. Cause I heard those books do have a lot of violent scenes and stuff in them, but yeah. And I got to say, I didn't, why are we turning this into a twilight podcast? I don't know, but I got to say when 50 shades came out, that was what we were expecting from the Twilight movies, but with vampires and werewolves. Oh, okay. Which those Fifty Shades movies were also toned down to try to get to yeah fucking yeah. mass crowds. Which when it from what I heard, because again I'm not going to sit down and read the Fifty Shades of Grey books, <laughs> but from what I heard, those movies were so watered down they barely resembled those books. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because how the fuck are you going to? You should have just made a porn. Like you yeah. could you could have done something that no one's ever done before and gone back and just made like the most well produced porn Por right. ever to exist. Right. The most professionally done porn. I would have paid to watch that. See, like the most professionally done porn yeah. you could have ever made. And I bet you you would have made more money. I don't know. Oh yeah. I feel like it. Because those movies were trash in a fucking handbasket. I can't stand those either. They're not <laughs> movies. None of these are fucking movies. They don't have a point. Like, anyway, you, we have to get back to this. Uh, yeah, you're right. Fucking you, to hear to hear me drunkenly bitch about Twilight. You need to go subscribe to our Patreon because there's a commentary on there. <laughs> you don't even have to watch the movie and listen to the commentary to to get it. But I am like drunk off my ass just bitching about Twilight for like an hour and a half. <laughs> it is it's some of the wildest shit I've ever <laughs> fucking listened to. But anyway, anyway. Anyway, that's Dog Soldiers from 2002. Uh, I liked your reason for not liking this one. Yeah. Like, that was good. That's legitimate. Like, that's a very <laughs> legitimate reason not to like a movie. I love it. But anyway, and see, this is this stuff gets me excited when people give me answers to why they don't like something and they're not, like, yelling at me <laughs> all in caps and shit. But anyway, next week... Uh, it's well, it's uh, Thanksgiving next week, isn't it? Next Monday is the week of Thanksgiving. Yes, so it is the week of Thanksgiving next week. And uh, we are doing a movie that has to do with a little bit of Native American lore. So we're going to discuss that. And I thought, I don't know. 
I don't know. I didn't know how to exactly do something for indigenous people for, you know, the Thanksgiving month very much because there's not a lot of indigenous horror movies. That is, there's a lot of books and stuff about it. And there's a lot of stories out there. Just not a lot of people are turning them into movies. So I figured, you know, save Wolven for then because uh, th- there's a lot of themes in that that I think uh, kind of have to do with, uh, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it on that episode. But anyway, next week is Wolven from 1981. That's right. We're heading back to the 80s. Uh, it's the third movie that ushered in the fucking werewolf train of the 1980s. Right. Uh, <laughs> like I said, in the 80s, we got Teen Wolf. We got fucking all sorts of shit. <laughs> So anyway, until next time, when, uh, which by the way, if you are missing the transformation scenes, man, you're not going to get one next week either. These are like animals. These are full on wolves. Okay. Like, anyway, I'm sorry. Sorry. Anyway, so that's, you know, until next time when the moon is out, <laughs> we howl at it. I'm Lee of Insane. Stay spooky. And I'm Brittany. Stay horrific. Uh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. To get a hold of us and submit your stories, fan mail, and death threats, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and nightofthehorrorfile.com. Our theme song was written and performed by John Brennan. Use with permission. Find John at shopjb.bandcamp.com and at badtechno.com. If you like what you hear, leave a good review wherever you listen to podcasts and share the show on your social media. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>